finally figured it out. I finally figured out what was wrong with my file. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, in my last video I was gonna try and show everybody how to take their book design, zine design, magazine design, and put it up into Amazon's KDP, which is Kindle Direct Publishing. I was gonna put it up into that system, and I was struggling. I was struggling, and I struggled, and I struggled, and I struggled some more. But I figured it out. And now, not only do I get to show you the entire process, but I get to show you all the things that you definitely don't want to do. <laughs> Let's go! What's going on? My name is Dave Conry. I'm an artist designer based in Southern California and today what we are talking about is Kindle Direct Publishing and how to get a paperback book, specifically a paperback journal designed, well it's already designed, uh, published up into Amazon's KDB program. Okay stop! Listen, uh, I, this video that I made when I originally made it was super long. I didn't want it to be that long. I wanted it to be short, but uh, you know, Mr. Big Mouth here, I can't stop talking. So what I decided to do is actually trim this video into two videos. The first video is me talking about how I'm exporting my file outside of Affinity Publisher. That's video number one. Video number two is going to be how I take the file and put it into KDP's publishing system. That way, in case anybody wants to see one video versus the other video, they can. I'd love it if you watch them both, but you don't have to, okay? Thank you very much. Uh, let's get on with the show. I'm gonna go through, number one, show you how to export the PDF in the right way, because I was doing it the wrong way. Number two, how to get it, all the details put up into the KDP system. Number three, the things you need to look out for in KDP so that you don't mess up like I did. We'll get to that in just a second, but not before I say, hey, if you appreciate this video right now, even in these few short moments, do me a favor, hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed to me and you want to know more about all the stuff that I do, make sure you subscribe and you hit that bell because you never want to miss a thing. Oh, and uh, if you think uh, somebody you know might appreciate this, then share it with your homies. We're going to get going, but first, let's readjust this light. It's in the wrong spot. Is that better? That's a little bright. Turn that down. I'm still figuring this stuff out. Okay, let's do it. Into the screen. First things first. Let's look at our document. As you can see here, I've got the manuscript completely done. First page, that's our, uh, that's our title page. I've got a little bit of a dedication there, and then our introduction, and then jumping right into the rest of it. I got it all finished. I got all the pages done. I had to change some stuff up. One of the things that KDP had instructed me is that this white page that I had here, this empty page, was too empty. I carried over the lighthouse, and then I put the text that I had at the bottom up at the top. Did that just to make this page a little bit more compliant. They're not really keen on having a lot of blank pages in KDP, so uh, they gave me a little bit of a red flag for that, so I fixed it. Also, in this page, I added this slight bit of texture. I'll zoom in here a little bit. Uh, just to make it a little bit more interesting. The only thing I'm a little bit concerned about is that it doesn't have a really good correlation to the, the rest of the imagery on here, but I'm not that concerned about it. I just wanted it to have a little bit more texture so that it wasn't just flat. If I zoom down all the way to the last page, like I was sharing in the very first video when I was designing this page, I wanted to put a little bit of information here that basically kind of gives people the permission to go ahead and get the next edition of this after they've finished this one. So that's pretty much it. That is the manuscript. That is the interior pages. So I'm going to export out, and if you're in Affinity Publisher, that is Command-Option-Shift or, what is it, uh, Control-Alt-Shift on PC. Command-Option-Shift-S, and we're going to save this as PDF. Now, I have a few presets here. I've already got mine set up, and I'll show you exactly why I did it this way. I created a preset specifically for this. This particular one, this document, is a grayscale document. It's not a CMYK, it's not an RGB, I've got it as grayscale on the inside because color on KDP is a little bit more expensive. And now you can do it if you're like making like a color zine, or like an illustrated zine or something like that. Sure, by all means, do that. But uh, it's going to be more expensive, it's going to cost you more money on the, on the front end before you can get it into the hands of somebody else. And so your revenue, your margin is gonna be shorter, of course. 300 DPI, I definitely want to include a bleed. I don't have a lot of bleed images here. If you don't have any bleed images at all, then that's fine. Just make sure that if you have no bleed images, then you definitely do not want to include bleed. If you have bleed images, make sure. This is important because this could be an issue when you go to bring it into KDP. I don't need to preview export. I probably should have, <laughs> actually, now that I say this, I really should have had that 
that checked because if I had checked that, I would have saved myself so much time and anguish and I'll tell you exactly why. You see this right here where it says area? This is basically saying, how do you want the PDF to look? Do you want it to look like spreads where it's like open pages like that? Or do you want it to be just the current spread? Do you want it to be all pages or just the current page? What I was doing is I was saying spreads. It was just, I didn't even think about it. I just, it's the, it's the automatic PDF process for this particular setting. It was just there. I didn't think about it. I wasn't thinking clearly. What happened was, is when I brought the manuscript up into KDP and I went through the whole previewer and it was like I was missing half the pages. And that's because the page size that I chose in KDP was single page, but I was uploading a document that was full spread. And so if you can imagine, it only wants a single page. This other page is basically trimming right off. That page is gone. I was only seeing the one page. So we don't want all spreads. We want current spread or we want all pages, every single page. So that way every single page is its own page. Every single page has its own bleed. Every single page is what it is by itself, standalone. That's what you want for this process. Trust me on this. Now I definitely want to click on more just so I can see what's going on here. PDF, uh, rasterize unsupported properties. I'm not hundred percent sure. You know, it's like, I, I think that that's like, if you have these weird vectors or SVGs, or I'm not 100% sure. KDP says they recommend that you don't downsample. So if you if it says here downsample images above 375 DPI, it's going to downsample to you know down to 375 or down to 350 or down to 300 or something like that. It's going to downsample, and KDP says don't do that. The best way to avoid that is just design your images that are going into the document at the same DPI that you are exporting the document. I'm exporting a 300 DPI. All my images should be at the same dots per inch. Otherwise, it's just gonna get weird and you don't want weird when it prints. Resample bilinear, that's the default setting. I One of these days I'm gonna have to look in what the difference is between bilinear and bicubic. I, you'd think after this many years of being a designer that I would know this, but anyway, so I digress. We're gonna use the document resolution. Actually, I'm, uh, the, well, the document resolution is 300 DPI, but I'm bouncing it down. I'm making sure it's at 300 DPI. Just in case I might've messed that up, but I didn't, but don't. just. Just make sure your stuff is at 300 DPI. Allow JPEG compression. It's standard at 98%, you know, because 100, for some reason, the, the compression difference between 98% and 100% no compression is like, <laughs> somebody, it come, like no compression and just a 2% compression compresses that file down just enough to make it small enough to mostly get through most things. Everything else here is a default. I include bleed, include layers. I don't really need layers, hyperlinks. Like if you were sending this as a digital ebook to somebody and you wanted to have those links active, then you could have all that. Just for our purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck it. I don't know why. It doesn't really matter because it's gonna be printed, so it doesn't really matter. But there's always this possibility that the code that goes in might make something weird. I don't know, it could happen, so let's just go ahead and uncheck that. I definitely want to embed all my fonts. I have options here. I could do text as curves if I wanted to, but the only reason I would ever do this would be if the text was big and it was limited. It wasn't, you know, copy, like it wasn't body copy like we have on the page behind here. We don't want to turn all that to curves because it could make it look weird in the long run. So I just want to embed my stuff. What I don't want to do is not embed them. And because I don't have the capability of sending my file out and then sending my fonts along with it. If I was doing that for a print shop, then I might do that. But I, I, don't, I don't really have the need for that. I don't have any capability with that with KDP. So I definitely want to embed all fonts. Close that and then export this. Now I've already exported this numerous times, but you can, that's exactly what I would do. So that creates the manuscript that I upload into KDP system. But let's move on to the cover real quick. Here's my cover design. The process is basically the same, except this one isn't black and white. This is obviously going to be full color. So I'm going to make sure my document is in CMYK as opposed to grayscale. One tip is that you want to build your document with allowance for the spine. My actual page dimensions are six by nine. So if I wanna bleed, then I need to compensate for bleed on both sides and I want an eighth of bleed on both the sides and on the top and bottom. And so that would be a six and a quarter by nine and a quarter page. On the cover, 
it's going to be twice the distance because it's two pages combined. So it's going to be more like 12 and a quarter by nine and a quarter. But there's also the spine. This distance right here is as important as anything. And for most books, it, it, this one's really small. This one's about a quarter of an inch. Obviously, the more pages that you have in your book, the more chance that spine's gonna be a little bit bigger. As you can see here, as I build more to the back cover side so that I can push that back and forth, because I don't want my front cover content to be compromised. I want that to be what it's gonna be. But I have flexibility on the back cover. So I'll build a little bit extra on that side in case that spine ends up being a little bit thicker than I needed to. In fact, this exact thing happened to me with this particular document and I had to go back in and adjust that. I'll talk about that in a little bit more later, but I had to make that adjustment and I already planned for it. So everything worked out cool. Command option shift F so we can export this. I don't have a preset for this. You can go ahead and put PDF for print include bleed uh the whole document my document's already set to cmyk so i don't need to change that but we can go in here and make sure that's all picked pdf 300 everything else is basically the same and where is that one uh color space as document which basically means it's taking whatever the document is and bringing that in but if you just want to be safe i go i'm just going to go ahead and hit cmyk just in case just making sure that I've crossed all the T's, dotted all the I's, made sure. <laughs> I've done this so many times, I just don't want to mess it up again. And everything else is basically the same. Embed fonts, all the other stuff, blah, blah, blah. And then I export that and save that as a separate file, obviously. So that's that. That's the design aspect things. That's the, the pre-flight, the post-flight, the, the mid-flight. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the processing stuff you need to do within Affinity Publisher until you find out that you need to go back and change it because you messed something up. That's all the stuff you need to do in Affinity Publisher. Let's go over to KDP. That's going to do it for this part one of this two-part video series. I apologize that I had to make it two parts, but I thought it would be better for you all in the long run, and I tried to do my best to make sure to split it in the in a good enough spot so that uh, it's uh, best. Yeah, I tried to do my best to split it in a good spot, and I hope I did a good job of that. If you want to see the other video, it's going to be linked right there be in the description and all the other stuff. That's it. I'm going to let you go. Thanks very much for hanging out. I appreciate you. Happy New Year. Uh, be good today. Be even better tomorrow. See ya.